Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it is another warm mid-June day here in Southwest Florida. It is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 32 degrees Celsius. I think the heat index is 102 degrees, makes it feel like 102 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is 39 degrees Celsius. So even though there's no sun, it's still, it's a warm and sticky day. So these guys are just loving it. Um, this is this is a great day for growing orchids here in Southwest Florida. I should also mention that uh, during the video today you may hear the rumbles of thunder. So this is this is rainy season and the orchids like that too. Uh, but during rainy season what happens is in the, in the afternoon you can count on it uh, the thunderstorms come in and uh, they'll either hit us or not, but they're always around. So you get scattered thunderstorms. Sometimes they're really intense. When you get it, you get doused. Uh, so <laughs> we may get doused today, we'll see. Uh, I've already heard the uh, the rumbles of thunder. So what, what's happening is, so that is west and the Gulf of Mexico, the water, the, the ocean is right there. It's about a mile that way and that is fur further inland. Um, so what happens is the storms kind of build up and then the breezes from the, uh, from the Gulf kind of keep them away. So it may or may not rain here, um, but it does most days. So any, anyway, what I want to do is give you an update on some blooms. So I got I got some surprise blooms today where I came out and I saw this guy was open. It's kind of late. Yay. Yesterday I saw that this guy right here was open and then it's like, wait a minute, what? Um, some unusual things <clears throat> that I'll share with you in a minute. Before I get started with that, I need to show you this guy. And this is Oncidium Sherry Baby. And this is just a it's it's an one of my older plants. And it's, uh, it's a really reliable bloomer for me. So this is the one, this is an Oncidium that has a chocolate fragrance to it. And I can't smell that much of it right now because it's, uh, it's middle of the day. These things normally smell, they're at their peak fragrance uh, earlier in the day. But this is a nice big plant here. And the reason I'm sharing it with you is that it didn't look like this yesterday. I should have taken a video of what it looked like yesterday, but this was just, this was ferns. The ferns, they, they get in the orchids and they do that a lot here. So you get spores, uh, fern spores that are blown into the orchids and you get these it, plants come up and if you don't remove them, they grow. And I got a little lazy with this and it was just covered. You actually couldn't see the beautiful plant underneath it. I mean, the flowers came out, but I didn't know it had this many leaves on it. This was kind of a surprise. Um, but I pulled all of the uh, all of the ferns out of here. At least I think I got them. Usually you don't get it. When you have ferns like this, there's always residual left behind. But I think I did a pretty good job of pulling them out. And they, uh, this plant looks, it looks really nice and it is, loaded. There was a bloom spike that I actually had to, that was old, that I pulled off, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six bloom spikes uh, on this Oncidium Sherry Baby uh, that are coming out. Um, and it's, you know, it's a nice plant. It's one of my first ones. I still like it. Um, I, I haven't divided this thing in a few years, but, you know, maybe it'll be time to. Um, Anyway, I wanted to share that with you first uh, because it is uh, one of my older plants. Okay, let's move on. I want to share this plant with you next. And this has been blooming for quite a while. And this is Big Dipper. And the bloom on this, it's past its peak. Um, the interesting, oh, I just see, I'm noticing on the other side, it's got another pseudo, oh, on the, both sides, it's got two new pseudo bulbs coming out of it. So this plant is doing uh, pretty well. Um, this, this plant has bloomed for me previously. It's a good, it's a pretty reliable bloomer uh, twice a year. It's growing in 100% LECA. This I purchased from a, a colleague. 
I was going to pollinate this today, but I'm seeing that the bloom might be past. So this has been blooming, I guess, I think it's been blooming for about three weeks. So it may be past being receptive uh, to handle some pollen, but I might try anyway, just, uh, just for fun. Um, but this bloom is interesting because what happens with it is that the, the flaring and the striping in the flower, it's different with each bloom. So I get this bloom and then the previous ones. And, and what I'm going to do is put uh, the previous blooms up on the screen so you can see how different they look from time to time on the same plant. And for me, that's, that's just kind of interesting. So there's something that's going on in the flower uh, gene expression or from, for whatever reason that you get slight, you get variation in the flaring and in the flower color from time to time when this plant blooms. So anyway, this, this is a, I mean, this is a nice plant that I'm enjoying. Uh, doesn't need to be repotted. Uh, seems to be doing well in the LECA. And this is again, Big Dipper. The next one that I want to show you is right next to this. And this was the one um, that just, that I found that was blooming today that I didn't realize was going to be open. Um, and this is, Cornelia calipana, and this has bloomed for me previously. <laughs> I'm looking at this one, and I've got, again, another new pseudobulb coming out here, another new pseudobulb coming out right here. So this seems to be doing pretty well, and it just bloomed, and I had a couple of flowers that just came off uh, yesterday that got old and fell off. So this this puts out a new bloom spike, uh, puts out a new pseudobulb and then blooms and and it just keeps on going. This flower doesn't look great because it just opened today and it's not completely open quite yet. But one of the things I want to show you, oh and there's there are two flowers on, there are two buds on this spike. So I'm, gonna, I'm expecting another bloom. But one of the other, one of the things that I want to show you is right here and this is the um, a seed capsule. And so this is going to be interesting because with this capsule that is going to be, it's, it's going to be close to ready, but this, I crossed this with an orange Cattleya. So I'm really curious to see what I get out of this, but I think I still have maybe another, another month uh, maybe two on this capsule. It might not be ready yet, but uh, Cornelia calipana, it's looking, looking good and it's doing, doing pretty well. Okay, the next one that I want to show you, I just got a couple more that I want to share with you. And that one is right here. And this is interesting <laughs> and a little bit of a mystery. So these two blooms, as you can see, are on the same spike on the same plant and look how different the bloom, the individual blooms look. This is a nice yellow um, cattleya, large cattleya. And the bloom that is on your right, I think has this purple lip and then the other bloom just has a little slight amount of purple in the throat. So it's, so it's really interesting that you do get this, the variation, such variation in flower color. And, and I think, but I've seen this over and over again. You just, you just get this. Um, I should mention, I don't know exactly what this is. On the tag here, this says BLC in parentheses, Adisto Times American Heritage. And then it has in quotes, Hawaii. So I've tried to find this. This is another, it's gonna end up being another mystery orchid um, because I can find a disto and I can find American Heritage and it may be a cross between those, but then I don't know what the Hawaii in quotes mean. That usually indicates an award, but I thought in order to get an award, it has to be a named plant. So I'm not sure what's going on with this plant. It's a beautiful plant. I actually have two of these and my other plant from a, um, from where I, I split the plants, uh, the other plant also has a bloom spike coming out. So I'm really interested to see, but it, has, it hasn't opened yet. So I'm really curious to see what the flowers on this other plant are gonna look like. Um, and, and again, what I have is another pseudobulb coming out there, just one on this plant. Uh, but this is just early in the, uh, the blooming process, but beautiful bloom just opened today just a hint, just a tiny hint of 
Yeah, just a really small hit of fragrance, but I'm sorry, it opened yesterday. But as these things, um, you know, open for a few more days, I think that the, the, uh, the fragrance here will uh, develop. And the other thing that I want to share is, as far as the fragrance on the orchids, I put out a, just a request to assist me in describing fragrances, and I got a lot of really good suggestions. So I'm going to study up on that a little bit and see if I can give you a little better accurate descriptions of fragrances that you get from the, uh, the food science industry, but also from the perfume industry. So I hope to be able to learn more and kind of describe the components of the fragrance with this and some of my other flowers. So let me put this guy back. And then I want to show you the last one that is a new bloom for me. And it is a recent gift and it's, I'm sorry, there's not much, <laughs> Not much to this, not my favorite, but it was a gift and it's my first bloom and I gotta share it with you. So this is a, a Brassavola Mayaka Stars. And the, these are tiny, tiny flowers on this, on this plant. Um, it was actually given to me in Spike and a lot of these things have bloomed. And this is, I guess this is cute. This is, these are dainty flowers. Not, not getting any fragrance um, out of it, but this, these were, I think these were, this was generated by a, a local uh, breeder in, in Florida. Um, not all the blooms are open yet, but it seems to be really prolific. Um, it's got a lot of flowers on it, like I said. What I'm gonna try to do for fun uh, is to cross this with some of my bigger flowering catlayas, just to see what I get. I, I have no idea what's going to happen. Again, the small uh, Catley Alliance plant, they're not really um, my favorites. It's not something I don't strive for a flower like this, but it does have some features that I think are desirable. So what I'm going to try to do is make some crosses. I want to see what comp how compatible this is with some of my other plants and see what I can come up with. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because this flower reminds me a little bit of the Encyclia tempensis, the Florida butterfly oak. And I did a crossing video uh, a little bit ago on that. And I crossed Encyclia tempensis just because I had so many plants and so many flowers. I crossed a lot of different cattleyas onto Encyclia tempensis. And as it turns out, it's only been a short time, but none of the flowers have fallen off. None of the seed capsules have fallen off. Uh, and actually some of the, some of the, the part of the flower, uh, the ovule, has, has on some of these guys has enlarged. So I've got some really unusual crosses with my Encyclia tampensis, but I, none of them have, have failed yet. So I'm really curious to see what happens with the Encyclia and also from this Brassavola cross to see what I can get out of it and what kind of unusual uh, flower shapes and, and colors. Now there's not too much, there's not going to be too much color contribution from this obviously. Um, you know, this is a green and, and white flower, maybe some, maybe a little bit of purple or pink in it. Uh, but the, the shape of the flower is what's interesting. And it's called uh, Mayaka stars because the, the flowers are, are, are star shaped. And you can see really thin petals and sepals on this. Um, the, other, the other potential concern is the parts on these are small. Um, many of these Brassavolas have really, really small uh, flower parts to them and it's really hard to get the pollinia up in the right place and this is going to be a little bit challenging especially with the big pollinia that I have but I want to give it a try and I want to see what what I get as far as how interesting I know that the, if I get anything out of this it'll be interesting and even in with my encyclias I'm going to be happy if I get a, out of the five really unusual crosses that I made I'll be happy if anything goes. And the same thing with this. Success rate on crosses doesn't tend to be very high with, with me because I go to such, I do wide hybridization, but I'm, I'm happy with anything. Um, I, you know, every capsule is a lot of work. So it's okay if I do, you know, five crosses and only get one or two uh, to work. Um, I, I'd like getting more than zero is, is the point. Okay, so that's all I have for there. I've got other 
Um, other orchids that are that I see in my collection that are putting out bloom spikes. I've got a lot of other things that I want to share with you. I've got a whole list of videos that I'm I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, to film, and I'm I'm excited about all the stuff that I want to share with you as we move forward. <laughs> it's I don't know if you can hear it. It's it's there's some gentle rumbles of thunder that I'm hearing off in the distance, and it's getting pretty pretty dark over there. I'm waiting for the win. I don't have it yet. Anyway, um, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you liked my video and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Okay, from a warm and humid and not too windy southwest Florida in mid-June, I hope you enjoyed my video and happy propagating.